We're sitting here fabricating. Putting together a sense of the body, putting together feelings, perceptions, more fabrications, even putting together our consciousness of these things. It's something we do all the time. And the things we put together are not totally mind-made, the raw materials come from our past actions. And sometimes the materials are good, and sometimes the range that's offered is not so good. But it's an obsessive quality of the mind to keep on fabricating, keep on making these things. They last for a while, and then you have to make new ones, scrounging around for whatever you can find to give rise to a sense of pleasure. And we go for the pleasure, but deep down, instinctively, we know that it's not going to last, which is why we tend to gobble our pleasures when they come, and then cast around to see what we can do either to maintain the ones we have or to create new ones. It's the pleasure we get out of this process that keeps us going, and it's our sense of control that leads to our sense of possession, that we have this ability to create these pleasures and that we have the ability to, to consume them. And as long as the raw materials are good, we're doing fine. Like right now, there are some good aspects to what we've got going on around and inside us. The rain may be cold, but there is something about a rainy day or a rainy night that tends to focus you inside. All around you outside is wet. So instinctively we look inside to see what potentials we have here. And all this would be okay if it weren't for the fact that it's so precarious. It depends so much on the range of materials that are available, and things can change so quickly and so radically. This evening I was reading a piece on Germany in the early 1930s, and people were saying, oh, dictatorship couldn't come here. And that was just a year before Hitler took power. And for many of the people who are saying that, things turned very bad very quickly. The range of options open to them suddenly narrowed down horribly. So this political change, economic change, earthquakes, storms, death, illness. Death is the most radical, because you have no idea where you're going to get thrown the next time around. And the mind keeps, have, keeps along with that insatiable drive for more fabricating. That's why we get reborn, or experience rebirth. We keep looking for things, we keep craving things to, to feed on, to fabricate, to turn into the kind of food that we enjoy. And then we suddenly find ourselves in places where the options are not attractive at all. If the uncertainty of the human realm isn't scary enough, you could think about the Buddhist descriptions of hell. All those hell beings trying to fabricate some happiness out of what a horrendous surroundings. And what seems particularly horrible about the hells is that they hold out a hope for happiness, 
something. There's that hell that has a door on the far side, and everybody's running through fire to get to the door, hoping to get out. And they get to the door, and it slams shut. And then a door opens on another wall, so they go running through the fire. This keeps up until finally they do get through the door, and it turns out they fall into a hell of shit. And it just gets progressively worse. So this is one of the possibilities of fabrication, this need we have to keep turning the raw materials of experience into form, feeling, perceptions, fabrications, consciousness. And so it helps you realize that when things are going well, you want to fabricate a way out. Because for most of us, what do we do? We play around. Things get comfortable and we like to play. Just fabricating for the, for the pure joy of fabrication. This is what art is all about, music. Fabricating purely for entertainment, without realizing that the fabrications we make are a kind of karma. And if we neglect the opportunity to create something good and solid out of these fabrications, in other words, create a path that leads us to something secure, then those periods of play, those periods of joy, they're just little interludes that can suddenly come crashing down. Which means that when things are going well, we have to be heedful. We've got this opening, we've got this opportunity. We want to make the best of it. Even when things aren't going well, we want to make the best of what we do have. To figure out what's the most skillful thing that you can make out of these potentials. The Buddha says the most skillful thing is the path. Like what we're doing right now, focusing on the breath. That's a form. It's one of the elements of form. And you direct your thoughts to the breath and you evaluate the breath. That's a form of fabrication. You hold the perception of breath in mind. All of this so that you can create a sense of feeling. It's pleasant, easeful. You want to spread that throughout the body. Then you've got a consciousness that's aware of all this. The fabrication is trying to keep you here. That's what mindfulness is. It's a kind of fabrication. And so is alertness. And so is the ardency with which you try to do this skillfully. You're trying to turn these aggregates into a path. A way out of all the potential heavens and hells that the aggregates, this process of fabrication, can lead you to. Even the development of discernment is a kind of perception. You apply the perceptions of inconstancy, stress, not-self, to the aggregates. First, as you're sitting here trying to create a sense of ease for the breath so you can get the mind concentrated, anything else would be a distraction you try to see as stressful, inconstant, not-self. So as to wean yourself away from the attractions of playing around with those distractions. And ultimately, once the outside distractions have been dealt with, then you start turning around and applying the same perceptions to the state of concentration you've got going. You're realizing, okay, here are aggregates as well. And although the stress may be subtle, it's still there. The constancy may be subtle, but it's still there. Which means that these things are not totally under your control. They're not the ultimate happiness. And as you keep that perception in mind and convince yourself of its truth, 
that's when the mind begins to turn to the deathless. And even then, though, the mind has this tendency. It likes to keep fabricating. It creates a sense of passion around the deathless when it experiences it. That's why there are different levels of awakening. The lower levels still have a sense of passion. There's still some fabrication that goes on around the deathless. Which is why when the Buddha describes the contemplation of the aggregates, first there's all fabrications are inconstant, all fabrications are stressful. Then there's all dhammas are not self. The dhamma here applies to the deathless as well. So a passion you fabricated for that, you have to learn how to let go of that too. That's when there's full awakening. So it is possible to use these aggregates as a way to a truly safe place. That's one of the epithets of nirvana, haven, refuge, security. Because otherwise the mind just keeps going, gobbling things down and trying to fabricate more. If it can't find good things, it just stuffs horrible things inside itself. It takes whatever it can get. If it can't get good things, it takes pain, gobbles down the pain, fabricates sometimes even worse pain for itself. That is the tendency. We want happiness, but we take whatever potential we've got and we turn it into suffering, we turn it into stress, we turn it into misery, all out of our ignorance. It's only when we learn how to take this process of fabrication and do it with, do it with knowledge. Understanding where there's stress, what's causing the stress, what can be done to put an end to it. When we bring that knowledge to the process, then it becomes a process that really does lead away from stress and suffering, does really lead to some hope of security. The Buddha described those hells that can happen if we don't reach that security. And he said at the end, it's not that I, he had heard these things from other people, he had seen them directly for himself. It's really out there, these horrendous states of suffering we can get into. And it's all our continual obsession with fabricating and feeding and fabricating more and feeding more. That's what leads us there. So now that things are going relatively well, you want to not just fool around and play, have a lot of fun. You realize there's work to be done. Remember the old story of the ant and the grasshopper. During the summer, the grasshopper just sang and sang and sang. And the ant kept working, and the grasshopper kept saying, Why are you working? It's so nice out here. Let's just sing. And the ant said, Well, there's winter coming. And the grasshopper said, Well, I'll take care of winter when it comes, but I'm going to sing right now. And then, of course, when winter came, the ants went underground, they had food, and the grasshoppers all died. So as you're fabricating here, remember, it's not just an opportunity to sing and to have a good time. We've got this whole hour here as we meditate. We've got whole days to meditate. We don't know how much longer those days are going to last. The world is a very precarious place. Our karma is very precarious. You have no idea what good and bad things lurk in your past karma. What you do know is you've got this opportunity right here, right now. So you want to do your best to fabricate it into a path, a path that really goes someplace safe, secure, refuge. where there's no lurking danger at all.